and welcome to my presentation on our Social Emotional Learning Pilot Project in Ethiopia. My name is Cody Gleason and I'm an English Language Fellow for the U.S. State Department and I have a Master's in International Development. This program that I'm going to be discussing was thanks to um, an initiative by the U.S. Embassy here in Addis Ababa. I am based in Ethiopia at the moment and uh, we are using a curriculum that is provided by Kinful, which is a very interesting social-emotional learning curriculum. And uh, I will discuss more about it further. In this presentation, um, I want to introduce you about Ethiopia in general and its educational system. Then I'll talk about the pilot project. I will provide a typical lesson that we are providing. And we'll talk about the program objectives, its impact, and then you'll hear from students themselves and their testimonials. Okay, welcome to Ethiopia. We have a very large population here, 125 million. It's the second largest in Africa. 60 million are under the age of 18. So we have a great opportunity here for the future. A very diverse country, over 77 ethnicities. However, in the past four years, there's been a surge in ethnic and conflict, a political conflict here, mostly in the Tigray, Amhara, Aromia regions in the borderlands. Perhaps you've heard about the conflict in Tigray. It was um, under siege for over two years and a half a million to maybe a million people have died as a result. So um, we really want to bring this pilot project to Ethiopia because, um, because of the ethnic tension that is rising in this country. Um, we really want to promote dialogue, empower young leaders because we have so many young students in this country. Respect for diversity, um, social awareness, empathy and um, problem solving. These are some of our core objectives. So I want to introduce to you the educational system here in Ethiopia. It's still a rote learning system. Um, a typical classroom would have um, a blackboard and a teacher teaching material. Not all the students would have books. And uh, of course there's a huge wealth gap um, like anywhere in the world. However, and here it's really stark because you might have smart classrooms here, but most um, schools would just have a blackboard and a teacher. And um, a lot of the schools have been affected in the conflict zones. Um, they've been occupied or destroyed. So a lot of resources and money are going to rebuilding schools. English is the medium of instruction. However, depending on the location, um, you will be taught in your first language until grade seven. However, you're not given any resources or support. So when um, it switches over to English, you just have to know English. And that is a big obstacle in this country. Uh, a lot of people complain that, is it a medium of instruction or obstruction? Um, a lot of people don't speak English well enough to really follow a classroom and its content and curriculum. However, that is the national language and it's a national language because of um, it's politically neutral. They have a national language called Amharic that a lot of people speak. However, it is now, um, provide some tension. Um, well, e English provides uh, a medium that is uh, neutral politically. I want to demonstrate the full linguistic landscape of Ethiopia by showing you four typical students. You might have a student whose L1 is Amharic and they learned English in school. Another student who speaks another language and Amharic, which is widely spoken as a second language and English in school. Well, you could find people here who speak really basic um, Amharic, which is uh, mostly a national language. And this is where English becomes really important is you'll have maybe a student from South Sudan who speaks newer as a first language and speaks English a lot better than all the other Ethiopian students because they speak it communicatively in South Sudan much more than in Ethiopia. So um, as you can see, this is the issue here in Ethiopia and I want to harness the full linguistic repertoire of all these students and use all their backgrounds in order for them to speak English more fluently to produce language in natural and genuine situations. Higher education is free, which is great. However, you have to pass this grade 12 national exam, which is in English. So if you don't speak English well enough, a lot of students are decoding or deciphering English. They're not actually speaking English uh, communicatively or fluently. And this is a big obstacle because last year and the year before, in 2022, about 30,000 out of 900,000 students passed this exam. They changed the rules. They took uh, the high school students and put them into universities to um, monitor them, to make sure they don't cheat. And the result was um, 
very surprising and concerning 3.3% of the country passed. So you can imagine only 3.3% of grade 12 students are entering university in 2023 and in 2022 and 2023, it's about the same. So where do we go from here? Previously, I discussed some of our overall goals in the context of Ethiopia to provide respect for diversity, um, perspective taking, uh, empathy, and problem solving. But for our students, we have some more immediate objectives. Uh, we want to promote communicative English and uh, make the classroom more learner-centered, which is really unusual for a lot of our students here, and promote um, spontaneous uh, language environments in a natural setting that um, really helps emergent language and promote genuine communication and collaboration. So when we're doing this program, we really want to collect as much data as possible because we want to expand it in the future and hopefully get more funding so we can provide more opportunities for more students in Ethiopia. This uh, pilot project right now is only with 75 students total, 25 students from three different universities. They're all sophomore students from different regions in Ethiopia. So we have um, the South, Arbamench, we have uh, the West, Jimma, and we have the East, Haramaya University. So we collected a lot of data. The students went through a rigorous selection process. We wanted to ensure for gender parity, diversity, dedication, and they needed some basic English communication skills. But um, we also wanted to choose students that could grow a lot in English. The selection process aimed to harness the linguistic and ethnic diversity of Ethiopia. Also to provide a space where uh, different academic disciplines could meet to better communicate, bridge divides, and grow into compassionate leaders. So why social emotional learning? Um, I've discussed some of the benefits, um, but we also want to teach uh, managing emotions, um, having empathy, making responsible decisions, and maintaining healthy relationships. So these are skills for life, school, and career. Um, also, it helps with critical thinking, self-awareness, self-confidence, and team building skills. Um, these are certain things that we don't get to practice very much in universities here in Ethiopia. And we want to see the impact over time uh, by dent of this program. Research has shown that students with strong social emotional learning competence do better academically, have improved attitudes and behaviors, and have more friends, which makes them feel more connected to the school community. And in the United States, um, uh, there are social emotional learning programs in over 45,000 schools. Uh, research shows that uh, students are twice as likely to earn a college degree and nearly 50% more likely to graduate from high school and have a full-time job by age 25. So you can see my citation here. This pilot project, what we did is we trained three teachers, one um, English language fellow like myself and two local staff. Um, and we provided a space where we meet uh, four and a half hours a week for about six months. So there's a lot of um, a lot of time devoted to this project. Students will gain um, social emotional learning skills, but they will also become program alum, and we really hope for them to become ambassadors for future projects. Another great benefit of this program is they get to use VR technology with pre-recorded videos, so they can interact with students from all around the world. They can also make their own videos and share them, so other students can see. Uh, what they're experiencing and how they understand the core competencies. So let's talk about the Kinfolk curriculum. This curriculum was designed by two former Peace Corps volunteers who wanted to provide social emotional learning skills to more students. So they have three main pillars, which is intercultural exchange, social emotional learning, and the VR equipment. Um, the Kinfolk kit is like a turnkey kit. It's really useful. There are a lot of games and activities that are familiar to uh, American students growing up, as you can see by some of the activities that are provided. Um, what's really nice about it, it's they're all designed around uh, five skills, and they're really easy for teachers to pick up and deliver. Also, they have the chance to have a 3D film, so they can use this 3D film to upload videos onto the VR equipment and they are encouraged to film what they've learned uh, through reflection on the, the main skills, which we will discuss a little bit uh, further soon. So this is just to give you a glimpse of what the camera looks like. It's a 3D uh, camera, so you can see and feel the texture of maybe a school in Kenya or Indonesia or here in Ethiopia. 
All the activities are hands-on, they're student-centered, the students have to work together, the teacher doesn't give instructions. They provide um, a handout that shows them how to do the instructions and the teacher's just a guide. And that's where the problem solving comes in. It's important for them to struggle and work together, collaborate and find the leaders among the group. So that's a little bit about the Kinefil curriculum and the project itself. Uh, let me show you a typical lesson. The Kinefil curriculum revolves around five competencies, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. So responsible decision-making is about constructive choices, but also it's about social interactions, social norms, and ethical standards. There's a lot of sub skills that are involved, like reflecting and identifying problems, uh, analyzing situations. So they interact uh, physically with an activity and then they have to reflect upon how that relates to responsible decision making. Likewise with social awareness, uh, we talk about what the competency is so they understand it. Sometimes they have to define it themselves and then we kind of check for understanding formatively. There are a lot of sub-competencies like perspective taking and appreciating diversity. Likewise with self-management, the skills actually have them practice self-management and it also has them reflect on how it relates to self-discipline, motivation, and goal setting. There are activities for relationship skills, but relationship skills are built throughout the whole curriculum and the whole project, which is really nice. So they have to communicate, work together, and they have to use teamwork to solve problems constructively. And a really big one here for me is to negotiate conflict uh, constructively. Self-awareness is the last one. Um, they get to learn about themselves and how their emotions and thoughts influence their behavior. And we really focus a lot on um, a growth mindset. We did um, a camp here where we invited all the three universities to Addis Ababa so they can all meet and exchange ideas and we focused a lot on growth mindset and the change curve where you uh, face uh, adversity and how you overcome adversity to create a new change in your life that is sustainable. So again with self-awareness we have identifying your emotions, how do you perceive yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses, and uh, building self-confidence. So I'll give you an example activity. We will focus today on social awareness. We would start off the class by defining the competency or skill that we want to practice for that day. So it's really important that they understand it or they can define it themselves. So if we focus on social awareness, we need to focus on the ability to take the perspective of others, to put yourself in other people's shoes. We can also build language like expressions, like put yourself in somebody else's shoes to help them understand since a lot of them are um, ESL learners. Also, um, it's really important that they connect these abilities to understand the social and ethical norms for behavior and to recognize family, school, and community resources for support. So the first activity would be the, the definition, but then we do a little warm up as a whole class. Um, I would ask my students to imagine this word, tree. Now close your eyes for 15 seconds and picture a tree inside your mind. I would then ask my students to talk to the person next to them or at their table, what kind of tree did you picture in your mind? Are your trees the same or different as your partner and why? So they'll discuss and a lot of them will have different trees because of their different backgrounds. And um, I love to share with them my background, which I'm from the Pacific Northwest. So of course I picture a tall Douglas fir. So as you can imagine, a simple word like tree can be interpreted so many different ways depending on your background and your experience. We usually picture something that's personal to us, um, that relates to our childhood or something we see all the time. Some trees have fruit, some trees are simple, some trees are large, some trees are, are just sprouting. So you can imagine if we picture a word like tree differently, imagine bigger concepts like justice, freedom, liberation. These words um, are interpreted differently, so we really need communication and social awareness to understand each other. So that's a typical warm-up activity, and then we'll move on to stations. After the skill has been defined and there's the icebreaker, you'll put them into stations. So maybe it'll be five stations with five people at each group, and you have to give them ample time, at least 10 minutes, 
because they have to really work through each task together as a team. The teacher is not giving instructions. This is one of the key elements of social emotional learning is that they collaborate and try to problem solve. So uh, the way this works is they have to experience each station. So there'll be maybe four or five stations and some of them are familiar to us. Uh, Jenga, magnetic poetry, story cubes, and blind draw. They have to experience each station and then have time to reflect on that station and how it relates to social awareness. And then after every student has participated in every station, you'll have a whole group reflection. So this is an example. They will have this card on their table. It'll have a summary and objective and directions and um, also the reflection question. So the students can analyze this. Um, most important is the step-by-step -step directions. They can read it or they can try to work it out. Um, it's up to them to decide how they uh, negotiate the task and uh, you learn a lot from them by observing. And that's a really important part about this is reflection. And the teacher has to monitor really closely to observe uh, the gaps and then the highlights and what really came out and what did they learn about themselves and each other through the activities. So always give them ample time and warn them um, how does this activity relate to social awareness. And then also the last question is the most important. How can learning about your classmates help you empathize with them? So they play Jenga and then they draw a card depending on the color and they're really personal questions you don't normally ask each other like the last time you were afraid or the last time you got angry. And you learn a lot about each other and you feel closer to them and more connected. You would do the same with magnetic poetry. They would have directions and create their own poems and then discuss and reflect. Same with story cubes, they make their own story and it has to be very creative and they have to discuss how they learned about each other. Blind draw, they are back to back. One person describes what they're drawing and the other person has to draw what they're saying. So it's a communicative activity and they also have to reflect. Every activity has an important reflection at the end. So um, we realize that some of these activities are, you can't really do without the materials. So right now, um, teachers from uh, Ethiopia and Tanzania who have already done this pilot project, they are working together with the Kinful program to design a curriculum that has a few resources or resources that you can buy locally. And we're trying to contextualize some of the games, bring in some local games, so it's more familiar to um, the students that we're trying to teach. So we can make this more accessible throughout Ethiopia and Tanzania and East Africa in general. So the most important part, um, there's a reflection within every activity, but as a teacher, by far the most interesting and most difficult part of the whole curriculum is the whole group reflection getting everybody to stand up in a group and reflect together on what they learned. So it's really important that the teacher pays attention to all those little details and, and, and bring it out of the students and talk about them and get them to really reflect on uh, how this relates to social awareness. How can they empathize with others? What did they learn about themselves? How can they respect diversity and how does that relate to their life right now and to their school and to their community? This discussion is the most important part of the whole curriculum. Okay, that is a typical kinful social emotional learning lesson. <laughs> this past April, we had this really nice event where we invited all three universities to the capital, Addis Ababa, where they could all meet and exchange with students that have been learning the same material as them, but in different universities. We really focused on growth mindset versus fixed mindset. We did some really nice activities where they had to ask themselves honestly what kind of personality they have through a personality quiz. Here is the example of the growth mindset quiz just in case you might want to use it in your own classroom. It's really good to ask these questions for reflection. I welcome new challenges and new things. Um, they also focus on feedback. I look forward to feedback from my friends and mentors on a scale of one to 10. And I know my strengths and areas I need to improve. It's really important that students be honest here. So you might want to get them focusing on some questions and have them answer it with a partner. For example, do you avoid or ignore feedback from others? So with the growth and fixed mindset, challenges, failure, effort, feedback, and success are main pillars. They can add up their score here and find
find where they are, if they are a growth mindset powerhouse or they still have a lot of room to grow. They added it up and they shared it. So we talked about how to use this material and the content we've been learning in social emotional learning in real life. And then we discussed uh, the change curve and, and how um, things don't go your way most of the time and how we can use that growth mindset to integrate new abilities and a new way of living into the life that we want for our future. We also had them do more artistic and uh, craft related activities like symbolic self-portrait and then as a team we put them in different teams and mixed them up so they weren't stuck with their universities but met other universities and uh, they had to put it together in a collage which was really nice and we gave them points and had a leaderboard and at the end they had this final activity where they had to put on a play or a skit or performance. That was completely up to them and they decided as a team and they performed at the end. Communication affects it. For example, assume this um, this language well, something is spoken from someone, and it is going to through the old country, transmitting from one another to another, and it will be modified. Maybe as you as you seen, it is decreased. The message has decreased its uh, meaning, maybe or some other things. Even it might be increased. So this is a different uh, the example of that. The message first was much more wider, and it gets. Lower, lower, and lower. Even it might be lost. I have you. Are you seen here? What you have seen here? So this is what communication how it affects, and we can relate this with our country. Now we know how fake news is affecting our country. So this we, the the reason why we are not having a peace is communication. So if, even as you see on the other dramas and the other groups, the other groups, their problem was because of communication, because of the communication. So if we deal with the communication, if we can work on that, we can solve everything. So how do we all together say communication in the case of everything? Okay, so how do we measure impact? Um, the project is still ongoing and it ends really soon in May. But we took a diagnostic test at the beginning on their English ability, what they understand about social emotional learning, their communication skills, and we wanted to make this really measurable so we can change, see their change and their growth over time. Um, it's really important too that we took a lot of informal assessments, observations, and um, there's no real summative assessment here. That's not the point. The point is for them to grow over the course of the program, so hopefully we can collect that data and, and demonstrate uh, impact and change in their lives. So, um, we took a midterm assessment recently, and in this midterm assessment, we wanted to measure their self-development. And self-development can mean growth and leadership, but there's many types of leaders. 
there's operational leaders, there's collaborative leaders, there's inspirational leaders. We want it to be really open. We want to see if they can um, apply the skills in real life and how they work as a team. Do they want to try new things? This was really important. And we applied it to um, a standard scoring guide. Also, English development is a key indicator. This is an English language program. We judge their speaking and their writing development over the course of the program from their diagnostic test to their midterm assessment. And we also got a writing reflection on how well they understand one of the competencies during the Kinfolk camp that you just watched. Lastly, um, we recorded them and uh, they gave a video testimonial and we showed them the videos so they can get good feedback on their speaking skills. We also wanted to provide for more detail. So maybe a student developed in speaking but not much in writing, or maybe they, you know, were good as a leader but they, are, they could work better as a team. So um, this is a good formative uh, note-taking assessment for us as teachers so we can improve over the course of the program and for the rest until the, the final uh, assessment. So some key findings. There was an observable growth in confidence and communication skills. They're much more eager to get up, speak in front of their classmates, help each other. They are speaking more openly, asking follow-up questions. And uh, you can just see the joy in the room as well, as they have more of a growth mindset. They receive feedback better. They see failure and mistakes as an opportunity to grow. And this is something that you just can see. It's visibly in their actions inside and outside the classroom. As I mentioned, their collaboration, they're working together, they're listening to each other, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and they help complement each other in that regard, which is really nice to see. And there's just a genuine connection between the students. They always say we're a family now, and I really think that they might be friends for the rest of their lives after this program. And of course, English development. Uh, we are testing their English. We wanted to see if social emotional learning could be a vehicle for um, improving uh, English in the classroom. It's student-centered and I think it really fits what Ethiopia needs because um, they can read pretty well. In school they're taught to decipher books and if you give them a text they can analyze it but they never get the chance to produce language. So I think this is a great opportunity for emergent language in um, an ESL classroom through the vehicle of social emotional learning activities. So um, a couple things that I noticed that are really good um, that uses some best practices in emergent language is elicitation. So um, maybe strategically pausing to allow the learners to reformulate their utterance. So as a teacher, you can observe and kind of say, take some time, what do you mean? And um, this really helps them. And you can also use translation. So how do we say that in Amharic or their other local language of Anaroma or Somali? So, um, and extension is so important. Um, we get them to um, find alternative ways to say the same thing so they can um, make connections. They might know how to say something one way. I find that Ethiopians speak a really formal language, but they don't know phrasal verbs that well. So that's a great opportunity to say, um, give up and quit. And really it's um, improving their language, it's making them more communicative, and they speak more fluently. A couple more things um, in emergent language. Um, interactional recast. Um, I really like this because what you can do is you can say follow-up questions like, oh, okay, so then what happened? And then they have to keep talking. And this is really a great way to check for meaning and how um, fluent they are. And sharing is so important. So as a teacher, I'll go around and I will monitor and I'll collect information, useful language that we talked about, especially since we're all doing the same activities around a similar skill. I could then bring back that really good point or conclusion back to the whole class so we can discuss it as a group. And really the spontaneous nature of this curriculum is one of the things I love most because you'll never know what conclusion you'll get to by the end of the class. You'll start talking about social awareness and then you'll start talking about these really big issues and, and how we can um, build a more peaceful and just society or you start talking about really personal things in your family. So you never know where the class is going to end and you also don't know what language is going to emerge. So social emotional learning activities is a really good vehicle for emergent language. If students um, are really good readers, I think these student-centered activities really activate um, language and force them to produce, expand, recast, and share. So let's talk about uh, local perceptions. Uh, how is uh, social-emotional learning received in Ethiopia? 
what is the response from teachers? I think this is important to discuss. You might see headlines like this in the United States from time to time. Bills in at least eight states have sought to ban or limit SEL. And um, there's just some politics involved, and I think some of us are aware of this as teachers, of course. But in Ethiopia, uh, we've been giving a series of teacher training workshops. Uh, I think I've trained over 100 local teachers. I've been working with teachers as partners in the classroom. And I've been trying to incorporate trauma-informed and trauma-sensitive practices into SEL so they can see the bigger picture of what we're trying to learn in the classroom. So what is the response? Um, the feedback, very receptive, um, because there's zero politicization. And really, they see the value. Uh, I think that they're really ready to talk about their feelings. There's also certain regions that are ready to heal and talk about trauma. I think it's a perfect time in the country right now to talk about these things. And um, really, they see the value in um, the student-centered activities and how they produce language. So for an SEL classroom, all these activities can be incorporated inside a lesson. It doesn't have to take over the entire lesson. It doesn't have to be a full project like we're doing. But um, a lot of the activities are just useful to, uh, to use as a warm-up or an input or an output activity in um, a normal ESL classroom. And um, I want to speak a little bit about trauma-informed practices because I think it's really important. Um, SEL is really about the classroom, but also that they can take that outside the classroom to their school and community. I think this is really important. They have those five skills that they're focused on. But um, at the same time, um, they need to expand it to their families. If people have trauma in their family, um, can they address that with the competencies they're learning in the classroom? Can they have authentic partnerships with the community when they find jobs? And do, um, when we talk about corporate social responsibility, that is also a linkage of social emotional learning and awareness of the community needs and, um, and the corporate world. So I think um, social emotional learning expands from the classroom and trauma informed practices really focus on that. And I really like this expression, learn anytime, anywhere. Learning doesn't stop once a student leaves the classroom. I want them to have the skills that they learn in the classroom and see how it can apply to their family, to their school, to their life, to their career. So um, some of the activities we've done with them to encourage this is they've uh, picked up litter near this beautiful waterfall called Seca and they travel there as a group. A lot of them don't get to experience tourism in their own country, so that's a really good experience for them as well. I can't understate the value of feeling like you belong to a community or a group, so I think this is a great way for them to connect and, and feel bonded. And you get to see them interacting. They came to the American Spaces, which is a place where we provide uh, free education and technology to the community through the U.S. Embassy. And uh, yes, so you get to see them go on field trips together. They're getting ideas for the future. Some of them want to learn coding or some of them want to be a programmer or a designer. So I really like to encourage this, um, this part of them to, to dream and hope. I just want to talk about some key points um, also regarding uh, trauma-informed practices. Really a key point is to know your community and school resources, your school counselor. Here in Ethiopia it doesn't really exist, but I'm trying to learn as much as possible to make those connections so I can refer students. I want to create a safe space so they can approach me with their problems and I can listen. And context really matters. Here it's very different than our context, so I don't want to assume anything. I have to um, really find out and investigate and really have an open mind. And as a teacher, social emotional learning, uh, let's be honest, uh, everybody has trauma, everybody, therapy is really popular these days. Um, if you, you need to take care of yourself as a teacher and teacher burnout is very real. So I think that uh, taking care of yourself, knowing yourself and, and finding times to take care of yourself is equally important for the well-being of your students. So these strategies are really important for the classroom, building trusting relationships, creating a safe environment, offering choice so your students are empowered, um, teaching that social emotional lang language so students know how to talk about their problems, and using multiple modalities is a form of accessing memories, especially if they've experienced trauma, they might feel shut off from certain things. And language really matters. So I really like this chart. Um, when you ask a student to do an activity like share items that symbolize um, your past, present, and future, 
maybe the past wasn't so good. Maybe the present isn't so good. So how can you hope for a better future? Give them an option. Share one item that symbolizes your past, present, or future. I think this is really important. Create your family tree. What if you lost family members? I have a lot of students who have. So maybe create a family tree of your favorite character or somebody from a book. These choices are really important and we really need to be considerate before we enter the classroom. We don't want to re-traumatize one of our students. So I like to keep this chart in my teaching journal so I can refer to it. And I also like to add to it because I come across a lot of activities that also may uh, re-traumatize one of my students. So, what do the students have to say about the program? Let's hear it from them. Hello everybody, my name is Hermes Sumi. I am a part of this Kingful program. So the first question is, what is your favorite thing about the Kingful program? To be honest, it is difficult for me to choose from the, uh, the activities that we do, but for me, the most uh, impactful and the most enjoyable thing for me is the games because I remember at first time coming here and playing the games but I didn't feel this would change my life but look at me now I have changed a lot because I am meeting different people I am able to speak to different guys and even uh, the games we play with each other help us to be uh, close to each other and make us friends together so for me the games are super good Social interactions and play is the most like mesmerizing thing to me. Where I came from a Kingful project. Uh, my name is Adis Nagash, and I'm from uh, Kingful project social emotional learning course. Uh, for the first question, what is your favorite thing about the Kingful program? My favorite thing about this program is that I have made new friends, and uh, our relationship is not just like any friend. It's like it is like a family, and uh, the games we play in every session and the trip to Addis Ababa help us to develop this kind of relationship, a kind of family relationship. And the other thing is that the different skills we have learned about uh, self-awareness, self-management, um, social awareness, and uh, a relationship, good relationship skill. Uh, it shows me this is a, these things in different dimensions. To be honest, no, because I use them every time, okay, not only one time, because uh, these skills are useful for us in our day-to-day -day lives, so for me, I use the skills every time, every day, and that's why I am able to uh, meet different people, so even at first, I am a shy kind of person, because my friends are only the, the my classmates, only my classmates are my friends, so... Uh, but, but after this program, I was able to meet new people, have new friends, and I have a new friend from different departments also, so it has changed my life. Actually, there are, uh, and for example, on social uh, awareness and social interactions and self-management, I already use those uh, skills for different things. And for example, for self-management, I started to like manage my emotions and myself on a different situation and circumstances. And also having uh, interaction with others. I'm trying, just trying to having a different interaction with different people by using different skills where I'm just learning from this program. Um. I don't apply. I don't apply those skills, you know, word by word. But uh, implicitly, I applied them. You know, before this, I had a difficulty to communicate with people or to start English with people. After this course, after I take this course, but I can go there and start the conversation. Um, I can. Right now, I have many new friends, and in that way, the course helped me. The third question is, do you think SL skills could benefit Ethiopia if it was part of the curriculum? How? To be honest, yes. Uh, for this, I want to tell you my story. You know, in my high school and in my junior years, in my elementary classes, uh, we only 
have passive kind of learning and teaching methods you know the the only things that we uh, do in outside or with people is the sports period you know in the sports period other than this we always have theoretical parts and because of that we couldn't able to communicate with others especially nowadays technology is becoming more and more influential in our lives and because of that students don't meet each other they just text uh, other person from other world apart because of that the communication is so low but after uh, this if this program is uh, incorporated in especially in child in grade two one a kind of thing in our curriculum in Ethiopia it will be very useful because students from different from different backgrounds different diversity could manage to meet up and the games will make them closer because I know it from my first hand experience with that so yeah that's my testimony it's it's uh, it have many benefits for Ethiopian community uh, as you know uh, 50 percent of the community is under uh, educational circumstance and if they go the such kind of program they can improve their thinking they can improve their relationship and even if they can improve their self-management skills then they can be uh, active, active person in their life and even they can avoid some conflict is like they can avoid those war issues if it will be part of their curriculum. Thank you so much. Yeah, it helps the country, not only the country, the next generation. Because in Ethiopia, people don't share their idea or opinion uh, because, because of culture or a kind of misbehave. But uh, for me, this is wrong. And uh, if the social emotional uh, learning course applies, uh, includes to the curriculum of Ethiopia, it will, may, it will help the next generation. Thank you. Yet it will uh, really benefit uh, in our country because uh, uh, this course will help uh, the young adults that age from I think from 14 to 24. It will help us uh, to know uh, to identify our emotions, how to make a responsible decision making, and how to uh, make our relationship status be uh, in a in a good way, not in the bad way. So it will it will really help our way. It will help the skills in our country, and that's. It. Going into the future, we are going to have a final assessment real soon and a graduation, and we want to collect all this data and present it to the regional English language office here at the U.S. Embassy in Addis Ababa and hopefully expand the program for next year. I want to leave all of you who watch this video today uh, with some discussion questions to consider, and we can reflect as teachers. How well do you know your students? Do you feel like they can share their problems with you? Are you approachable? Could you implement social emotional learning at your university or school? What challenges or opportunities do you anticipate? Who is responsible for the emotional and social well-being of our students? What is your role as a teacher? Okay, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, if you want some activities or if you want me to share these slides, you can contact me with my email address. Here are some of the citations that I used in this presentation. And mostly, I just want to thank all of you out there, and I really wish all of your students the very best. Good luck.